What up? Good morning, everybody. So today I wanted to talk to you about when the narcissist hates when the old supply uh, moves on. Usually uh, we find out like they usually find out, listen, like six months after, you know, or so it's been several months to where you've gotten to a point to where maybe you contacted them every few weeks or whatever, every month, every couple months, whatever, because you're trauma bonded. But at some point you kind of gave up on it and you went in for straight healing. Okay. And you know, maybe you weaned off them a little bit and then you decided, you know, I'm done. And you really went in and you just quit. You quit with them completely. Well, they're so focused on other sources of supply and they always know that you're their backup, that they can always come back to you. Okay. And it's just happened so many times that they just get in their head. Then they're so overconfident a lot of times that they just feel like that they could just always just come back to you because they've always been able to. And they notice that at some point in time, like a six month period or a six, seven, eight, nine month period goes by and it, it'll it hit them in the, in the head one day that, oh my God, that person hasn't spoke to me in like nine months or six months. And right away, they will get frightened and scared and they will reach out and they'll find that you're blocked. You have them blocked still, you know? And then they really freak out. And this is kind of how these things work, okay? And so I've experienced this and all this stuff. So what happens is they they, they try to come back um, and, you know, they try to kind of, you know, scope you out and stuff. They kind of get to a point where they had forgotten about you to where normally, I guess when you were reaching out to them, they would come back for a little while, you know, cause it was like, that was like a free one, you know, it was like free, it was easy, easy supply, free supply. And every time you'd go back to them or they'd come back to you, you'd get knocked back down for another six months or so and they'd get you hooked up again. But because they forgot about you and they had enough supply that, you know, it got to a point to where you kind of broke free from the trombone, you don't care anymore. So now they're coming to get you and they want to like reinstitute this trauma bond because they really need to. They're really scared about this because you were like their fallback. And a lot of times what makes them feel cool and stuff is uh, that they have you in the background. So first they had you as their primary supply, but then they had you as their number one backup as they're out running around. So it's almost like you were still there. It was just like, then you were just like, take them back whenever they decide to come back. And then when they decide to leave, they decide to leave. It's almost like you, you could go down to a point of almost no boundaries because if they can get you back whenever, even if it's not, you know, maybe for long or whatever, but they feel like they could always get you back. And so they have that comfort in their head until this kind of stuff happens. At this point, it does hit them for real. And um, so I wanted to go over a few things because, you know, this this really uh what they want to do is they got this is what scares them is if they can't keep you connected to them like let's say they let too much time get out from under them then they they know that you're breaking the trauma bond and so they gotta somehow find a way and if they can't find a way to get in they have to just come at you at, with guessing they don't know what you're doing or who you're with or if you're with anyone but they know that something's going on. This is how they feel. You may not be doing anything special, but you may have somebody new. You may have something new going on that's really good for you. And that's generally what they think. And that's generally what's happening. So they try to get back in. And if you're if your dumb butt lets them back in, man, then they're gonna destroy you again and they'll get you linked up and cored up and hooked up to them for another six, eight months, they'll knock you down. Maybe even a couple of years just from being with them just for a little while, because this is how this stuff works. It can really get you screwed up if you get in, they, what do they call these entanglements? So they want to get re in, in a new, new entanglement with you again. And if they can get you in that, then they'll get you caught up in the loop again, the loop to nowhere, right? The Satan loop to nowhere. And so they sense these things. And this is what scares them because when it's been long enough and they forgot about you and then it hits them, oh my God, that person hasn't contacted me in like six months. And they're like freaking man, that's what happens. And so this is what goes on and this is how it, it is. And and maybe they might, it might hit them also is because they're karma, they're reaping what they're sowing. Remember I told you that when they're wearing your fuel and they're corded up to you and you haven't let go energetically and emotionally yet, then they're still corded into you even if they're not with you. That ruminating, that energy's going to them. And it, it covers them 
from you know a lot of their reaping what they're sowing. A lot of times you can get pieces of it. And people that are in their web, right? Their web, they catch a little bit of it. So they also know that that they're gonna start reaping a lot of their 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 karma or they're reaping what they're sowing, like oh, for real, for real. So this is another thing that's scary. They just wanna come in, they wanna drag you down to the ground, devalue you. They wanna suck all your energy off and then they wanna break up with you again. That's kind of what's gonna happen. Yeah, they're gonna tell you a lot of good things and all that, but they're all future fakes, all of it. How many times have they done anything for real, for real? It's always future fake. I mean, most of the time they're cheap too. So if they ever said something's gonna happen down in the future financially or something, it's never gonna happen either. Um, but they, they, they hate when you have access to these good emotions and this is what they really need. And so if you're a, a super empath or you're an unawoke super empath or somebody who's a, a, a primary source, then you have these emotional details um, a, that are attracted to you, that they're, they're your traits, okay? You own these. God has given them to you. These are gifts, y'all. When you start comparing them with the narcissist, and they're they're part of humanity too, as much as we hate to think so. And and I question it a lot of times. But, but you know, if in fact they are humanity, then, you know, us having these good things are gifts, y'all. You know, when we talk about the gifts, these are gifts too. All these good things, empathy, you know, and love and, you know, joy and happiness. They don't feel these gifts. They don't feel these things. So that's why they want to get with you. They want, they when they first meet you, that's why they look up to you because you have a lot going on for you. You might be established. You might be making good money. You might look good. Um, you might dress nice. You might be physically fit, but also you have these gifts and you have humility. So it's hard to find all those things in one person, but then when they find all those things and then humility as well, then it's like, it's like, this is what they need, man. And, and, and so it's like, they really do pinch themselves. And so this is the thing. They, they think that they can hang out with you and that this stuff's going to rub off on them. That's really what they kind of think. They really expect for it to happen that I'm going to be able to like, if, cause they can get with people and then they can start acting like them. So they kind of think that they can carry this on and they lie to themselves, gaslight themselves, they're delusional, all kinds of stuff. But what happens is, is so they look up to you for a little while, but as you get continually enmeshed with them, they realize that they can't do what you can do. Meaning all of this stuff, you can't be just straight good. They can't be straight good with people. They have to be using them and abusing them. And then they realize that they can't have these traits. They can't like, uh, get connected into them, plug into the traits. So now they have to just steal them by projecting and flipping energy with you. And then they can wear your traits and they can use your traits and they can act like you, but it can't be forever. This is just for a time, y'all. And this this only makes them feel good. See, when they get with you as the primary source of supply, what they want is they want you to give them all that goodness. That's why they're always looking for admiration, adoration, the fawning, all of that stuff because they want that love and all that, because all that compassion, because that's not what they can experience. So they want you to throw it at them too. When you throw it at them, they absorb it all. See, this is the thing. That's why they glow up when they're with you, because they don't experience these types of um, emotions a lot of times. A lot of times they're with people of the streets, uh, not always, but they love it when they find somebody like this because they can absorb, they want to absorb these traits because they can't, they don't have them. They can't experience them at all. They're dead to them because you know what happened is, is it's almost like they denied them and God took them away. God let them die out. See, we can rejuvenate these, these gifts in us because we have a soul and our soul is not corrupted. Okay. It's, it's, it's heading towards the light. And so we have the ability and if you know the Lord, so I think that there's people that are saved or unsaved that can experience these things, right? But I mean, saved is is what you really want because it, it gives you this covering as well. And you get to experience God's love, which is in a deeper way. Um, but a lot of times there's a lot of people that fake God's love as well. And so you got to watch that. But you want to be able to bear fruit and you want to be able to love people genuinely. And so this is what they can't do. So then they they really hate you for it. They loathe you for it. 
And so after a while, that's why they start to put you down and do all these things because now the only way that they can experience them because you're not gonna really give them this love too much anymore because they're beating you down all the time. So at some point, you're in constant devalue mode and at some point, you're not gonna give it back to them like that easily because you feel like it's unfair uh, for most of us. Some will, but generally speaking, it's not gonna come off the same because even if you're giving it out, it, your soul knows that it's not right. So it's gonna be withholding. So now what they have to do is start fights with you and argue with you and get you contentious, get these contentious arguments so that they can flip energy with you for real. And so this is kind of stuff what happens and then they gotta get it through projection and stealing it. So first they convince you and coax you through um, the love bomb phase. So you're giving it freely then. But then after, you really don't like giving it and your soul doesn't want to give it because they're not really being good to you. So now they have to kind of start arguments and manipulate more and more. Now this is the next step of manipulating, right? So that they could steal these traits. Okay, and that continues to suck you down further. And it's like, you know, we always want, especially when you're talking about the narcissist, they're built on forbidden fruit, meaning like they have to have what they can't have. And so that's that's what they want, especially when you walk away from them and you don't want them anymore. You really just, it's not even like, you know, you're doing it out of revenge. It's just like, look, man, there's just nothing in it for me. And I've already been through this with you enough, man. You make me sick and I'm not, you're not even attracted. I'm not attracted to you anymore. I mean, basically. And so now you're just trying to walk away, blend in, you know, with the wallpaper and shit, man. And it just, it's not enough. Now they get pissy about it because now they know that it's real it's really for real and so what they like to do is manipulate you in the beginning by first they love bomb you they spend a lot of time with you right once they get you hooked then they get scarce and they pull back from you then you're like you can't find them you know they're picking up on you know like a call they'll call you back hours later they'll text you the next day they'll disappear and ghost you and come back and breadcrumb you. See, now they're making it feel like there's scarcity. And so now you keep getting on this hamster wheel and you start running faster and you're degrading yourself by doing that. See, but the thing is, is when you leave them and you're just done, man, uh, they discard you, accept the discard, man. It's like, I'm, I'm okay, man. I mean, I, I don't want to do this anymore and I, I'm not even attracted to it anymore. And so, you know, when you do that, you become the scarce one, really. Now they're starting to like, you know, do things in the background that make them run around. They'll be ruminating and trying to come up with plans and all kinds of stuff. You may not see as much as what they're thinking about you. You, but they are. And it, and it continues. And a lot of times this can be, you know, um, these when they do these scarcity things too, and like when you text them and then again, they don't text you for several hours and all that. Just think about it. This is part of that hot and cold method, this push and pull method. These are ways where they keep you attached to them through the trauma bond. These things, everything with them is late. It's long periods of time or you don't know what's been going on. You know, it's all this breadcrumbing. That's the push and pull method from texting to phone calls to them disappearing, ghosting, coming back and all kinds of stuff and getting in those fights and then loving you. All of it is push pull. I don't know if you realize that, but it took me a long time to catch on to that. But even texting is part of the push pull method, the way they'll wait and decide when they want to call you back and all. It's all, it's all BS. And so, uh, you know, you know, things that make them, why do they ignore you? They ignore you because there's different things. I mean, sometimes it's because they're, they're bored of you because you have, you know, you've been with them long enough and you don't have any more supply to give, or there's somebody else that they're interested in. You could have given them a narc in injury. So they, they'll do it out of control or because you hurt them. But for the most part, we're the push pull method, but these are the ways, reasons why they would ignore you initially. But now you're getting like that. But it's almost like you don't really want to. You just don't want to talk to them ever again. You know, you just want to be left alone, man. It's like the narcissist is a term you never want to hurt here again in your life. And so it, you know, it kind of puts them in a bad position because they're used to being feeling like a confident goddess or god or whatever status that we're the ones that we're always running after them, maybe, and... Uh, at least some of us, and it's it's just something that's not necessary to us. Most of the time, this doesn't happen, though. 
And this is part of the disorder where they start to get fixated on you. And it becomes an unhealthy type fixation, you know, to where they're, uh, they don't know what to do. And then at some point they'll readjust the mask, try to come back, they're ruminating. And then at some point they're gonna have to, con con if they can't convince you to come back, then they're gonna be following you around the rest of your life maybe, at least for a long time. Because this one hurts them. This really hurts them because they don't really know how to rationalize this as them being a winner anymore. It's like you won, they lost. This is how they look at it. They can't just look at it like you just don't, you know, let's just like let be, bygones be bygones, you know? And so it just, they can't get over it. Then they, they, they just, what's, what's funny is, is like they want to possess these traits that you have, right? And these traits, maybe they're doing it because they want to get healed, okay? And maybe... Uh, if they could possess these traits, then they could probably heal. But see, to possess these traits, they have to get to a point to where they get past, um, you know, pride. On the vibration chart, they stop at pride and then they fall again. So shame up to pride and then they fall again back down to shame. And that's kind of their abusive cycle. But the next level is courage, okay? And so for a narcissist to really get a healing, they would have to like accept uh, and, and work through whatever shame it is and, and get to a point, but pride, pride stops them from dealing with the shame, okay? And then it, it, it causes all of this mess. So what they end up doing is they end up because, so this is the thing, when you grow up in a narcissistic family, okay? And you grow up and you feel just as shame as they do. I mean, a lot of times in the very beginning and as you grow older, a lot of times you, you feel the shame and it does. I know this because I experienced this, but shame is what you feel and you to get over that shame, you have to get through the pride to deal with the shame. And so what I think happens is, is, is the black sheep, uh, the way they deal with the shame is at some point they, it's kind of like, you know, when you're ready to do like double judge on um, a jump rope or something. It's kind of like you'd watch the rope for a minute and then you jump in, right? And for me, that's how it was with salvation. Um, I have to be honest with you. For years and years, you know, I heard the word and I, I had a lot of shame. And I, I talked about this in the past where I had a lot of pride, but it's not like a good pride. It's just, it's shame and then we're born into a pride, like a we, we have pride in our blood, the negative kind of pride. Where not that we're better than everybody, but the pride covers up the shame. And to deal with the shame, you have to get over this. You have this pride that blocks it. And you have to get past that wall of pride to get to a level of courage. And so I think that the, the empath or the black sheep never uh, feels comfortable with the shame, but they have dealt with all of these same issues. But instead of going into the fantasy, they lived in the reality with these until they continue to injure them enough to where they would reach out and just deal with it. You know, some of, for me, um, all I could do is speak about for me, for me, I got saved. But I had to also go up to the altar and I had to accept Christ and, and accept that I was a sinner, you know, and let it all go. And, and, and God, you know, healed me from that. And you don't, you know, then you have to work through things over time. But I mean, that biggest stronghold of breaking that yoke of bondage, that chain, that huge, those chains that have been around you. It took a lot. It took a lot because to go up to the altar was something that I was, I was afraid to do. And in my shame, I didn't, I, I, I refused to do it for a long time, for years as a child. Yeah, I would have been saved earlier. I got saved at 20. And from then on, you know, the Lord was, gave me, you know, uh, more and more un wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, right?
and it, and so I just want to express that I think what happens with them is they build that shame up and in that pride they never can get to a state of courage so because they can never get a and this is a spirit I mean this is really heavy I remember feeling this heavy I mean almost to where it's dripping off of you like I want to go up there but I can't it's almost like that double dust you watch it for a minute before you jump in and, and praise God that I was able to get to that point to where I let that go. Um, and, you know, it, it is, it's a, it's a yoke of bondage. It's a, it's, it's just something that makes you feel so much lighter. Um, and, you know, Christ is king, y'all. And I don't know what else to tell you. This is a spiritual issue. And they got to a point to where instead of dealing with it in reality, See, at least the empath deals with it in reality. And, you know, maybe there's other ways of dealing with it. But the correct way, in my opinion, is through Christ the King. I mean, it, it is. And so, I mean, you can do multiple methods with Christ. But, I mean, I think that this is where it, 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 it it's, it's rooted. It's rooted in um, getting uh, whole again is to get... We just are all born into a a sinless with a sinless blood. I mean, everything on this earth is cursed, and the only way out is through Christ. And so, for me, I had to go through that, and thank God that He gave me the courage to get there. But they cannot get; they have to get through the shame and the pride instead of of getting to a courage level to where they be, can, you know, get to a point of vulnerability to deal with these things. See, they all kind of all goes together. Instead, they, um, they don't do that. They build a fantasy and because they build a fantasy is where they get hijacked. They get hijacked through the fantasy. It's the devils. That's where the devils take over. Um, and the construct is still built on that shame. And they never do heal. And so that's how it is. That's my opinion of it. Um, but this is how it is. And I think that they're kind of really want... so, But they want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to have the love, compassion, and, and all of the happiness and the joy. But then they also want to have the power and the control. But this is how the narcissist is. They are always want to have their cake and eat it too. And this is the thing. Maybe they did fall at a younger age, but you know, our innate spirit is probably at maturity when we're born, okay? And nobody really talks about this, but I was, I've was i been thinking about this long and hard. And I always say my my innate spirit didn't really change. Uh, when when I got saved, God helped me to understand him in, a different, in, in, in ways that I couldn't when I was not saved. But I also had the ability to uh, work in more of his gifts and his function because he's he. It takes power, y'all, to get saved. It take it, he gives you power. You have to have power to break those curses, and it doesn't make you perfect. You know, a lot of people, and you can't look at others because there's a lot of people that abuse and misuse Christ, and but. This is real. I'm real with you. And this is my experience. So they um, they can't handle this stuff. This is something that crushes them. I got to go. I got to work out today. He's been destroying me, this guy. All right. I love you all. Peace. We out.